This is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen and amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we commit this day to your hands as you have given to us. We dedicate it back to you. And we ask that, the oh Lord, you have your way in our lives as you have planned it. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh, fall afresh on your people, even as we study your word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. What an exciting time to be alive and well. Amen. Uh, if you are just joining me, Rama, I see you right there. The disciple, disciple Rama. Please share the broadcast to your friends. Tag somebody. Amen. Let, let somebody know that um, this is a time to uh, get understanding of God's word so we cannot be destroyed. Amen, somebody. All right. I am just excited to be alive and to know that you are alive as well. All right. Glory be to God. Well, let's get to the word of God this morning. We've been talking a couple of days about... Um, um learning the word of god okay when you pray you speak to god and um when you read god's word god speaks to you god speaks to you god speaks to you now scripture says that all scripture all right the bible says that all scripture is given by inspiration of god all that's some i want you to underline the word all all scripture is given by inspiration of god and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good works. All right? All scripture. Not some of the scriptures. All. Therefore, <laughs> therefore, <laughs> the, Bible, the Bible has God as the author of the Bible. God is the author of of the bible okay because all scripture is given is given the bible is the author of i mean god is the author okay i'm just excited about about just the just the word of god this morning praise god hallelujah amen now um again second timothy chapter three uh, chapter two verse um Come, come with me to Second Timothy. Let me get myself together here. I'm just excited about something. Second Timothy chapter three. Come with me to Second uh, Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen. Let's 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 get in the Word of God this morning. All right. Second Timothy chapter three. Amen. Somebody, are you there with me? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Second Timothy chapter. Chapter, what did I say? Chapter 3? All right, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Look at verse 16. Look at verse 16 with me. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration. All scripture, not some. I want you to underline the word all. Very, very important. Because I'm going to, I'm going to bring, you know, say, share some things with you that if you first don't understand that all scripture is given or not some um you will not you will not follow what i'm saying so i want you to underline that all second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 all scripture is given by inspiration of god all scripture is given by the inspiration of god the bible is an inspired word of god the Bible is an inspired word of God. So I want you to understand that, all right, very carefully. And it's profitable, it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It's profitable. So in any area, how you see it is for your good. Whatever you see it, however you see it, however you read it it is for your good are you listening verse 17 says that the man of god may be complete may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work you see the importance of why you have to read the bible because the author of the bible is god himself 
and he inspired men to speak and write it. God inspired men to speak and write it. And so it's very important for you and I to understand this, that the word of God is very important for you to read. Why? Because when you read the Bible, you allow God to speak to you. When you read the Bible, you allow God to speak to you. And when you pray, you speak to God. Are you listening? When you pray, you speak to God. And so it is an inspired word of God. God inspired his men and, and people to, to write it. Now, uh, script, uh, the Bible we have uh, is composed of a Bible composed of 66 books. Okay, 66, 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament. The Bible is the word of God and is sufficient. It's sufficient for guiding you and me all right through god through through jesus christ okay by the holy spirit the word of god the word of god guide us to god through jesus listen to this carefully now i want you to write this down the bible guides us to god through jesus by the holy spirit write it down let me say that again the bible guide us give us a direction to god through jesus by the holy spirit are you listening through jesus by the holy spirit so it's very important for us to get this and beloved again i want to stress the importance of reading your bible because it is the word of God, inspired word of God. When you read your Bible, you allow God to speak to you. So if you want to hear from God, you must read your Bible. It's as simple as that. If you want to hear from God, let's stop being lazy by not reading to hear from God and depending on other people to tell you that says the Lord stop because sometimes people miss it like i said there are so many voices all over the place if that individual is hearing from another voice that sounds like god <laughs> okay they'll be telling you something especially those of you who have itchy ears you want to hear you you just have an ear. i often wonder why do you want to hear what you already know what you want to hear from somebody Say it to yourself. Say it to yourself. And you'll be all right. Amen. So <laughs> forgive me this morning. I'm just excited about something concerning the word of God here. All right. Now, there, some people also says that, um, you know, I, I don't know if you've heard that before. The Bible contains the word of God. No, the Bible does not contain the word of God. We need to get this thing clear. The Bible does not contain the Word of God. The Bible is the Word of God. That, you see the difference here? All right? The Bible, you know, this, this, it's, a, it's an attempt, in my opinion, to discredit some part of the Word of God. And this is why, this is why the fact is the Bible, okay, it said it's 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 an it's it's an inspired word of God. It, scripture says that. Watch this. All scripture, all. That's why I asked you to underline this in the beginning. All scripture, okay, is given by inspiration of God. All, beloved, all. All means all. And so and so you we need to get this. So Bible does not contain the word of God. The Bible is the word of God. You get in the revelation here. The Bible is the word of God. Don't 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 allow yourself to be you know misunderstood by uh, you know the Bible contains the word of God. That that, that is to that is to 
to credit to discredit the completeness of the word that is to credit to discredit the fullness of god the bible does not contain the word of god the bible is the word of god okay that is something you have to uh, get that that's a fact that's a fact now the Bible is written again by the inspiration of God through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit moved on the man to speak and to write down the eternal truth of God. The Bible, the Holy Spirit inspired man to write, to speak and to write that which God has said. So in other words, uh, you one has to be very careful as to not adding anything to it or taking anything out all right speak it say it exactly as god has written it by the inspirational understanding okay of the holy spirit the holy spirit will help you to understand if you don't understand the word and if you don't understand it that's when you add some to it or you take some out okay but be very careful now the people who wrote the, the the men who were inspired to write the word were very careful not to add anything based on their personal feelings or um um you know personal prejudices if you will um to get in the way of what god has um, told them to write are you listening so it so whatever you whenever you read a word it is god speaking to you why because his spirit gives you the ability to understand bible tells us several times that this that the holy spirit bears witness to that of god it bears witness to the the the, the things of god so the Holy Spirit helps one to understand the Word of God when you read it. Amen? The Holy Spirit. So it's very important for uh, you to ask the Holy Spirit to help you to understand when you are about to read the Word of God. Now, remember, when you, when you read and study the Word of God, you, you position yourself for god to speak to you you position yourself for god to speak to you um if you if you um if you pray to god you speak to god you get in a revelation here when you pray to god you speak to god so this is very important for you to understand also okay come with me to um second peter chapter one Second Peter chapter one. Let's read from verse sixteen. Uh, very important, so that you can understand this. Second Peter chapter one, verse um, sixteen. Look at. Um, we're going to be reading from verse sixteen down. Verse sixteen says, "For we did not follow carnal, cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power." And coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. We were eyewitnesses. This is Peter talking here. We, we were eyewitness. Now, Peter definitely is an eyewitness of the ministry of Jesus Christ, our Lord. All right. So he's saying something very, very powerful here that for we did not follow cunningly, cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our lord jesus christ the coming of our lord jesus christ beloved if you haven't heard that for a long time let me just refresh your memory that there is a coming of the lord jesus christ all right let me just interject, interject this here there is a coming jesus is coming back he promised that he's going to return now the, the interesting thing is that uh, script Bible says that only the only it's only known to God the Father. Jesus himself does not even know when he is coming, 
is only known to the father but that's that's a surety that's a that's that's that is certainty that's a promise that he's going to come all right so peter is refreshing our mind here the coming of the lord jesus but we were witnesses of his majesty let's read uh, verse 16 again to make sense here second um peter if you are just joining us second peter chapter 1 verse 16 for we did not follow cunning cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our lord jesus christ but were eyewitnesses of his majesty we were eyewitnesses of his majesty verse 17 says for he received from god the father honor and glory when such a voice came to him when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory this is my beloved son that was a voice that he had that was a voice that he had this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased verse 18 says and we heard this voice which came from heaven we heard the voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain we had it remember on the day of transfiguration they were with him and they had it on the holy mountain they had it now remember this voice came the first time when jesus was baptized by john in the jordan right the heavens declared whose voice are you hearing they heard the voice from heaven. I've been telling you about a lot of voices all over the place. So you better know the voice of God. How do you come to know the voice of God? By reading his inspired word that men have spoken of and written for you and I. That's how you hear from God. Are you listening? That's how you hear from God. If you, beloved, if you don't cultivate the attitude of you hearing from God, you'll be relying on people to tell you what they believe God is saying. Okay? So you have to. Very, it's, it's, listen, this is paramount in the life of you, the believer. Verse 19. So we all, we also have the prophetic word. Listen to Peter still speaking here. We also have the prophetic word made more sure, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Get this revelation here. Knowing this first, you must first know this, beloved. You must first know this. Now, how do you come to know if you don't read the word of God? How do, do you come to know? Knowing this first, that no prophecy, underline no prophecy. <laughs> no prophecy of scripture. Now, you another thing you have to understand that the, the prophecy must align, be aligned with scripture. Okay, so if you are receiving prophecies, make sure that it, it aligns with scripture. Now, if you are not studying the word, if you are not reading the word, how would you know that that which you are receiving is in alignment with the scripture, with the word of God? How do you know? Because receiving prophecy is God speaking to you, maybe through a prophet or through somebody. But how do you confirm that? How do you how do you bear witness to that spirit that is speaking to you if you don't know the voice of god by reading his word are you getting this revelation here so it's very paramount beloved for you to understand that now knowing this first that no prophecy of scripture is of any private private interpretation verse 21 says for prophecy never came by the will of man Prophecy never comes by the will of man. 
but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Are you getting this picture here? Holy men of God spoke as they were moved by who? The Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. So if you don't align yourself, position yourself for God to speak to you through his word, beloved God, again, let me repeat. I'm, I'm taking my time to drill this in you. And that is when you pray, you speak to God. When you read his word, God speaks to you. Are you getting this? God speaks to you. You may see something, okay, in the word when you read it. That's, that, that jumps out and speaks to you. It jumps out to you. So when you when you receive um, 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 a, a prophecy, whether you know verbal prophecy or or through dreams or something or whatever it, it may be that God uses, you know God has so many ways of speaking to His people. It will be a confirmation. It will be a confirmation to that which God is saying to you. If you believe that, shout amen to wherever you are. All right, at wherever you are. Now, this is very important. So, so again, again, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man. Prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And even now, as it is, and so check, get this thing, this revelation very clear um, where um, where you are concerning receiving the word of God through prophecy. Okay, now that has nothing to do with the office of a prophet. I have said this thing. I'm, I want to re refresh your mind again. Prophesying does not make you a prophet. Prophesying does not make you a prophet. Okay, so somebody may God God may use somebody to prophesy to you, but that doesn't mean that person is a prophet. Yep, okay, that doesn't mean that person is a prophet. So make a note of that as well and stop calling people prophets or prophetess just because God sent a word through them to you, doesn't make them prophets. We need to understand the word of God, beloved. Okay. We need to understand the word of God. Very, very important. See, when your when 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 your your foundation is solid, you are not moved by what you see. You are not moved by what you hear. You're not moved by what the way you 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 yourself you feel. When your foundation is solid, you're not moved by what you feel or see or hear. Because you just know that you just know that all that you know is you know that that which is said of God it's settled and nothing can nothing can change it amen now God is God's word is eternal it's eternal as we we read it earlier the word of God is eternal it's final it's eternal Jesus said God's word is so certain that um um, and it's settled that even the smallest, the smallest jot of it will not pass away. The word of God, Jesus said that. I'll show it to you. Jesus said that that the word that God's word it settled that not even a jot of it will will, will fade away. Now, come with me to um, uh, Matthew chapter five, verse eighteen. Matthew the fifth chapter verse 18 Matthew chapter 5 verse 18 Jesus said that let me show it to you Matthew chapter 5 verse 18 look at Jesus listen to look look at it he says for assuredly for assuredly I say to you till heaven and earth pass away not one jot or one title will by no means pass from this from the law till all is fulfilled Till all is fulfilled. Till all is fulfilled. Jesus is giving that assurance. 
the word of God is eternal. All right, it's eternal, and Jesus is affirming that here in Matthew chapter 5, verse 18. He says, For I assure you, I assure you that I say to you that till heaven and earth passed away, till this heaven and earth passed away, not even a jot will drop out and will fade away of the word of God. Not one until every one of it is fulfilled. Until it's fulfilled. Are you listening? So God's word is eternal. I want you to make that um, observation. God's word is eternal. So what is written is written. Remember when Satan came to Jesus in the uh, in the mount in the the wilderness to to uh, to uh, tempt him with all kinds of stuff. Jesus told him, Satan that it is written. It is written. What is written cannot be annulled. It is written. Whatever God is written concerning you, beloved, that is what will come to pass. But how do you come to know what is written of, of you? By the Spirit of God, by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. And if you come to um, 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, verse, chapter 2, uh, read from verse, um, <clears throat> verse 6 down, I believe, uh, you're going to see that there. Okay, unless listen, it, whatever God has said, that is what will come to pass. Whatever God has said, whatever God has said, that's what will come to pass. Now, so in other words, the word of God is settled, it is written, it's, a, it's eternal. You can't change the word, and it's very, very important that beloved, we are very careful not to. Uh, you see, um, John, John make, made a very, very powerful um, uh, reservation here. Come with me to um, uh, Revelations chapter 22. I, I believe I want to put something, show you something here. Revelations chapter 22. We got to be very, very careful not to add or subtract or whatever, you know, to it, to the word of God. Revelations chapter 22. Let me show you something. Listen, listen to John the Revelator. Revelation chapter 22. <clears throat> Look at verse 18. All right. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. I testify that if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in these books. In this book. If anyone add to this Bible, that is what um, 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 uh, John the Revel John the Revelator is saying here. If you add any to the to the Bible, God will add the plagues. You know, there's a lot of plagues. You know what a plague is? Um, just just put it all in. You know, put it the way you want: it. sickness, diseases, curses, whatever it may be. You know, when you come to you come to um, Exodus. You see about ten or eleven plagues that that God used against Pharaoh. You see some of them. So if you don't know, there's any plague. I just pointed some to you, and there's a lot of plagues in this Bible, in this book. And so and so John is saying that he says, "I I testify to everyone who hears the words of uh, the prophecy, the pro the prophecy of this book." If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. Verse 19, and if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Okay? God will take also away. If you add, God will add plagues. And if you take away, you will be taken away from that which, which is written concerning you in this. Now, does it, does it bring you, did you, did you, I hope you didn't mix it. L listen to this. Listen to this. It says, if you take away, God shall take away his part. Watch this now. God shall take away his part from the book of life, 
from the holy city and from the things which are written in this book god would take and if anyone takes away from the words of this book god would take god shall take away his part beloved this is very important so studying the word of god is paramount in your life and you must know you must know what is written concerning the word of God here. Now, I mean, so many arguments. I, I met um, a gentleman the other day talking about, well, some people wrote the book, uh, uh, the Bible, and uh, some people have taken some out, and, you know, it's been transcended from here, there, then, and until now, and all the Listen, listen, I, 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 I don't argue. <laughs> My position is not to argue, okay, the things of God. God knows how to stand for his, his own things. God is, is capable enough to, to defend, okay? I defend my faith, okay? I defend my faith in God because there are, I mean, I can give you testimonies of, of te upon testimonies, load your whole house full of testimonies of what my faith in God has proven, has proven. So, so my, my, my position is not to argue with your unbelief. My position is not to argue with your unbelief. Now, when the time comes for you to come to the place of believing, you, you will get it right. But until then, I pray that the Holy Spirit will have its work in you. Okay? Why? Because the Holy Spirit is here with us. Okay, so John is making a very, very powerful assessment here that we should be careful not to add because when we add anything to it, God will add the plagues of this book in your life. And if you take anything out, he will take himself. So it's very important, okay? We got to get this in. Very, very important here. Now, the word of God, again, like I said, is eternal. And Jesus says, not, not even one of, of that which is inspired to be written down will fade away until everything is accomplished. All is done. Okay? Very, very important here. Now, uh, Peter said something very interesting. Peter said something. Come with me to Luke chapter... Um, um, uh, no, 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 no. Let's do First Peter chapter one, verse twenty-three. Peter says something. I'll come to look. First Peter chapter one, verse twenty-three. Come, come with me to First Peter chapter one, verse twenty-three. Thank you, Jesus. Look at First Peter chapter one. Okay, verse twenty-three. He says, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. The word of God lives and abides forever. And so, like I said, the word of God is eternal. It's eternal. You, I mean, nothing will shake it away. No. It's there for good. That's it. Okay, life, it's eternal. So here, look at Peter. He says, first, that is First Peter, if you just, just join in. First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 23. He says, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever, because, because, verse 24, because all flesh, is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass <laughs> all flesh all flesh Be beloved scripture says all flesh all flesh is as grass and uh, all the the glory of man is as the flower of the grass continue watch this the grass withers and its flower falls away. But, but, come on, say but. But, 
The word of the Lord endures forever. The word of the Lord endures or endures forever. The word of God stands sure. It cannot be faded away. It's not going nowhere. Interestingly, interestingly, very, very interestingly, a lot of people who are, have been, have been, you know, they've, they've, they came up very strong against the word of God and, and all that, are now confirming that the Bible is the, the, the finite where man is concerned. The Bible is is the is 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 that's it. Where man is concerned. Recently, there was um, a video that I, I was somebody sent to me about um, uh, Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu of Israel and sharing about the Bible, and uh, it was interesting to me. But at the same time, I wasn't surprised. Sharing and talking about the Bible. The Bible is uh, the Bible is is the book of the Jews. <laughs> it's claiming, okay, for them. Well, not only for the for the Jews who were called by God, but yes, we as the 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 modern Jews. Somebody says, all right, who we who have been called into the banqueting table through the finished work of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God, man. I love that. Amen. And so and so for. For somebody like that to even and talk about they have a Bible study, he's having Bible study in his own house. Hmm? He's having Bible study in his own house. And beloved, it's coming. You know, like Jesus says, not every every prophecy of it will come to pass. It says that heaven and earth will not pass away until everything concerned written in the Bible is fulfilled. And we are seeing it. We are seeing it live. Like somebody says, live in concert. We are seeing it live in concert. Are you listening to me? The Holy Spirit under the inspiration, I mean, the, uh, Peter uh, added this, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that God's word endures forever. The Bible is there forever. It's forever. Forever it is settled. It is settled. Beloved, it is settled. Amen? Nothing um, 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 uh, will pass away until the heaven and earth shall pass away. But the Bible, uh, nothing, nothing. Are you listening? I I'm stressing on the importance of you reading your Bible so that you can hear from God. God speaks through his word. You want God to speak to you Read his word. Study the Bible. Beloved, if you don't read the Bible, you're going to be listening to everything. Oh boy. Did I say that? If you don't read for yourself, you are going to be prone and position yourself to be hearing everything. And you will not be able to know that that which you are even hearing is not of God. It's not of God. Hmm. The word of God is sure and true. It's, it's, it's sure and true. It's been tested. I'm telling you. It's been tested. It's been proven to be the only guideline for man to God. The Bible has been tested and it's been proved by critics. I mean, I'm talking about the 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 the, the West critics, the, the the critics of critics. Now even say that indeed the Bible is the guideline and um, for for man. They admit the wisdom of the Bible. They do. Yes, the Bible is true. John, come with me to John chapter seventeen. John chapter 17, let's see something here, what John is also saying concerning that. John chapter 17.
Praise Jesus. John chapter 17. Come with me to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Look at verse 17. It says, Sanctified them. <clears throat> now Jesus is speaking here. It says, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Your word is truth. The word of God is truth. The word of God is truth. That is why you got to be very careful. You don't, you don't add or subtract. And John gave us um, a very, very strong warning concerning that in Revelation chapter 22. All right? Uh, the Bible, again, is truth uh, and has lived for, for all this while. The Bible, remember, the scripture was written before you were born. It was written before. The Bible wasn't just written today. It was written before you were born. Okay? So this is very important. And uh, God changes our lives. God changes the lives of men. Now, like I said, when you read the Bible, okay, God speaks to you. He speaks to you. When you pray to God, you speak to God. But when you read the Bible, God speaks to you. If you want, to, you want God to speak to you, read the Bible. And God, the Word of God has changed lives. Has changed lives. And uh, it's still changing lives even today. It's still changing lives even today today uh paul says something in the uh, in thessalonians uh that um, um the the lives of these people you know of these believers in thessalonians all right took a leap of faith by the word it took a leap of faith by the word by the word come with me let me show you that First Thessalonians chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2. By reading the Bible, it's important uh, that you understand this. You, it's important. Come with uh, First Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, chapter 2. Look at, um, let's read from verse 13. All right? Verse 13. For this reason, we also thank God without season. For this reason, we thank God with, without season. Because when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcome it not as the word of man, but as it is, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. The word of God works effectively in those of you who believe. The word of God. Let's let's read that again. Verse verse First Thessalonians chapter two, verse um, verse thirteen. This is Paul, Paul's um, um, interaction with the church um, in Thessalonians and those in Thessalonians. All right, verse thirteen says, "For this reason, for this reason." We also thank God without season. We thank God without season. Why? Because when you received the word of God, underline the word of God. That is what we're talking about here. The word of God, which you heard from us, you welcome it not as the word of man. Why? Because they had an understanding that this is an inspired word of God. Though man wrote it, but it was given by God through the help of the Holy Spirit. It was given by God. Okay, look at uh, example, somebody like Luke. Okay, Luke was not an eyewitness of the ministry of Jesus. However, Luke, by the Holy Spirit, took the letters and the books and the things that Paul wrote and publish it. Why? Because he believed. He believed the word. 
So Paul is saying here to the Thessalonians, for this reason, we also thank God without season, because when you received the word of God, underline the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcome it not as the word of man. You did not receive it as the word of man, okay, but as it is in truth. In truth, what truth? The truth of God's word. The word of God you receive, but as it is in truth, the word of God, the word of God again, underline the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. Which effectively works in you who believe. My question before I draw the curtain here today, do you believe? Do you believe? Now, how is it going to work for you if you don't believe? Do you believe the word of God? That it's an inspired by God. God's word that he inspired. Okay. So again, the word of God, it's a guidelines for man to, to God through God, through Jesus, by the Holy Spirit. Okay. The Bible is a guidelines, guideline for men through Jesus, men to God through Jesus by the Holy Spirit. Are you getting the revelation here? So it is important, beloved, for you to read your word, for you to read the word of God. Read the word of God. If you don't read the word of God, you're not going to hear what God is saying. When you pray, you pray, you speak to God. When you read the word of God, God speaks to you. It's a two-way street. Now the question is, do you want God to speak to you? Or do you want God to speak through, through other people? There's nothing wrong with that. But God must have a relation. You must have a, that relationship with God. Okay? You must have that. That God will speak to you. And so even if somebody else come and give you prophecy, or somebody comes and says, that says the Lord to you, it should be a confirmation with, of what God has already said to you. Why? Because you have a relationship with God. Through his word, you will hear what God is saying to you. So if you don't study the word, if you don't learn, if you don't search the word, if you don't read the word of God, you will not hear from God. I hope I have made some a little help, you know, to you. Some make a little sense to you. Let's read this again. I, I love this. All right, First Thessalonians chapter. 2 verse 13 Paul is saying this for this reason we also thank God without season because when you receive the word of God which you heard from us you welcome it not as the word of man but as it is in truth the word of God which also effectively works in you who believe the word of God effectively works the word of god works beloved i want to i want to just stop right here the word of god works the word of god works it works the word of god works in you who believe who believe so the question is, how often do I have to read the word of God? The answer is in a question, how often do you pray to God? Do you speak to God? Now, when you speak to God, don't you want answers? So the number of times you speak to God is the number of times you have to read the word of God to get answers from God. Hmm? The number of times you speak to God is as equal number of times that you must read the Word of God, the Bible, so that He, God, will speak to you. 
Does that make sense? All right. Now, how do you do that? How do you do this if you have not have established a relationship? First of all, again, let me repeat this. God, the Bible is a, is a guideline for man through Jesus. Man, let me, let me say that again. Bible is a guideline for man to God through Jesus by the Holy Spirit. The Bible is a guideline for man to God through Jesus by the Holy Spirit. So therefore, you need also to establish a relationship with Jesus. Make him your Lord and Savior. Are you listening? You know, this. these are the principles that... Um, um, we have many have overlooked for a long time. You have overlooked it. Now, when you keep overlooking what what is is written and what you have to embark on, okay, it you will not get the effect, the full effect of it. You will not get a full effect. And so, this is very important for you. If you have not watching me, listening to me have not made Jesus your Lord and Savior. You, you haven't established that relationship with him. It's paramount in your life for you to do that right now. Right now. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. The next hour is not even guaranteed for you. And the Bible says that it's, it is appointed to man once to die and after that judgment. It's appointed once, once. If you, if you pass out of this earth right now, are you going to be on the line, on the side of Jesus or are you going to be on the side of Satan? Your choice. But mine is to present the best way, the best decision you ever made in your life. And that is choose Jesus. And so if you are that person right now, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Open your heart. Open your heart. So I, I don't know how to open my heart, but I open. You got to open your heart. In other words, Release just every belief in you to receive this Jesus who is the author and the finisher of your faith. If you are ready, I'm ready to pray with you. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner and I come before you. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life and take control and help me through the Holy Spirit to come to know and write my name in your book. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, if you pray that short prayer, it may sound like, oh, it was just a short prayer. Yeah, beloved. That's it. That's it. Why? Because you release your faith. And God is only pleased with your faith. Not even that the long prayer, but your faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, it says, Without faith, it's impossible for you to please God. And so God gets pleased when we release our faith towards Him. And so yes, you have been born again. Yes, it's a spiritual birth. You've been born again. You remember when we read that scripture, says, since we've been born again, born again is part of our lives that we must come from that old self into the new. Get out of the flesh, thoughts, deeds, and works into that of the spiritual. May the Lord be with you. Find yourself if you don't have a, a, you know, a fellowship or uh, a local church or local assembly. Find a Bible teaching church, okay, or a group or assembly and plug yourself there. It will help you to increase in your understanding and getting closer to God, okay? Now, um, I came to you today only on Facebook. <laughs> There's something going on that's very interesting uh, with regards to the audio, other social media. Uh, we're working on it, okay? But um, this message will also be on YouTube. 
go to the YouTube account, Patrick Queno Ministries, and uh, download this message. It's for free, but subscribe, okay? Subscribe. When you get there, you see subscribe. Do that. Click on it and subscribe. It will be a blessing to you and this. Uh, there's a lot of, well, the information is not crawling on you, but if you want to reach us, okay, you go to the website, www dot patrick quino ministries dot com again www dot patrick quino ministries dot com and uh if you want to also be a financial contributor or um, um uh, a supporter to this ministry you can do that if the information is on your website if you want to you know you see the um the place that says donate when you click on that you will follow the uh, the rest of the directional instructions there However, if you want to sow by either through Zelle or um, Cash App, all right, the number for you to use is 914-572-9816. Again, for Zelle and Cash App is 914-572-9816. Okay, so you can do that, all right? Uh, on the other hand, if you want to use a PayPal, go to the website www.patriquenoministries.com okay now i told you that we are teaming up and supporting um um joy in giving foundation joy in giving foundation uh that is uh, we're embarking on um blessing you know this often age people often age children uh in ghana west africa in the in an area called the volta region now these children lack a lot lack every educational material and so we are joining uh the joy in foundation ministry to um give them the necessary equipment educational equipment so we welcome your contribution as well go to the uh if you want to use zelly or the um the cash app okay the number for you to use is 914 five seven two nine eight one six or you can do use a paypal also on the um the website www.patrickwinnowministries.com all right that will be a blessing as well well i want you to know you don't have no trouble tomorrow same time god willing we'll come together again and increase our understanding of the things of god those who have understanding cannot be destroyed can I repeat that? Those who have understanding cannot be destroyed. Wisdom will guide you. Understanding will keep you. Be kept. You don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. 